Redux advances here and it is pretty amazing. Hello my friends and how are you doing? It is time to look at some cool stuff. Let's get started. Redux Advanced is, you might have guessed it, a new node for ConfUI. You really need to have ConfUI if you want to do the cool stuff in this time. But this is very easy to use. So what you want to do, first of all, is to copy up here this URL on that GitHub page. Then we're going to head over to our ConfUI folder, in there into the ConfUI folder again, and in there into the custom node folder. Up here in the address bar, type CMD and hit enter. And then you want to write git clone and put the web address right behind that. Hit enter, let it finish, just takes a second, and then restart ConfUI. Inside of ConfUI, you're going to find these two new nodes. One is the simple version, and I would highly suggest to use that first. Here you only have the settings between lowest and highest different steps. Medium works really good for most cases. And then here you have the advanced node where you can set numbers that go from zero up all the way to nine. It's the same value as here for this image strength. And then you can also play around here with the merge strength and the clip weight to see what you get from that. But like I said, start out with this note. This is what I used for the samples I show you today. When you're on the GitHub page and you scroll down a little bit, you see this first example here and you can download this image, drag it into ConfUI, and this is going to give you the workflow. However, I build a workflow with a little bit more stuff in it. So if you want to have that, this is a reward for my Patreon supporters. But this part that you see down here, that is what you get from that image from the GitHub page. So up here, you load the image in that area. And then right here on the right side, you see here the apply simple. So there you can simply select the strength. Now you can additionally put a prompt in here. And this is actually the function of this node because Redux does not really look at any prompt. So it doesn't really change anything. But as you can see with the examples here, we can get different kinds of styles in here for that same image. And that is already pretty cool. But of course, I went further than that because what I want to show you here is you can not only use one of those, but you can link them together by using another one up here. Exactly the same thing with an additional image. And then even with three images or more images, play around, be creative. You can do really cool stuff. At this point, shout out to Richard who really helped me a lot today to figure all this out. Let's look at some examples of what this can do. So here I have this image I showed you yesterday and we want to change the style of that image. And usually Redux doesn't really change the style. It only makes variations of that image. So here you can see with the strength of medium for this new advanced Redux node, you can get with a prompt this image on the right, where it changes it into a professional raw photo, which is pretty cool. Now here, to be honest, I also added a little bit of a description of the image to my prompt because then I get a better result with the medium strength to actually have these trees in here because it can change a lot depending on what you're doing with that. However, you can also go more creative. So here we have two images and here we have both of them on medium strength. I have professional raw photo as the prompt. Now it isn't completely a photo style because it is mixing two images together that both don't really have a photo style. And of course, because now we have two images with medium, maybe they press a little bit harder, but we can get even more creative here. So here I changed the prompt to anime art. I said nighttime and I said violet and pink, and this adapted a little bit better to the style image I'm using here. And as you can see, it's picking up on the mushrooms quite on itself, even though here they look a little bit like umbrellas. Here we have the next example. Where 
where I set the right image to high and this makes it more look like a 3D rendering. Another thing to point out here is that the image that is higher from both of these nodes has the dominance more over the composition and this is why the character here is pushed off to the side and now we have the pathway in the middle as it is with the original image. Now here we have the same thing both set to high and here you can see that the character is more back in the center of the image even though we also have these elements here with the mushroom and the pathway. Next example I used the output image. So you can see here not exactly this image but a different image that I created from the output as an input. So you can also do that of course and then I changed it to 3D Octane Render, highly detailed 8K, and also I set the left image to mid uh, or medium and the middle image to and also I set the left image to medium and the image with the mushroom part to lowest. And this is the result we get, which is pretty cool. And I actually like also the glowing ears she's having here. Next example, what you can also do, and this was pretty cool, is that you can create a scene and then create a character. And here I created a character with a neutral background to get a better combination of both. And we get this image here. Now, I want to point out here that the woman in the image looks pretty eerie because she looks way too big for that room. And the reason I think is because both of the input images have a square ratio and the output is not square. So when we change that to square, you can see that we get a much better adherence to the actual size of the person. Now the image looks really cool and it actually fits perfectly but you can get even more creative with that because when we say, for example, in the prompt, in this case, I want to have from the movie The Shining, Stanley Kubrick style horror movie, analog film, you get that. And I feel like that really hits the spot of that movie. And let's go even crazier with that because what you can also do is that you use three image inputs. In this case, I used one image as just a gradient and that actually looks like an effect over that image. Now, this looks maybe a little bit Bit cheesy it's a little bit too much but what you can also do I thought if a gradient works why not a blurred image so here we have a blurred portrait image with a specific style of color grading and mixing all this together gives us this image which I feel is very atmospheric now I want to point out here one thing and that is that we have a lot of blur around the character also so it picked up on the blurriness of the image and that might not be ideal you might be able to fix that through the prompt. Here we have another example where I used a seaside image as basically the color input. Now in this case it doesn't really change the color of the image, instead it changed the background decoration, which also is pretty cool. And when we go back to the workflow that I showed you before, we have here the woman, the bar, and here we have a kind of Van Gogh style image as the input. And check this out. This is what we get as the output. It looks pretty amazing. Now the character is a little bit off to the side. One thing I find really stunning here is the reflections in the side where the moon is split up over two different mirrors. That is pretty amazing. My mind is blown. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Leave a like if you enjoyed the videos and thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.